Hello students. Today we will be dealing with lesson number 2. Reproduction in lower and higher animals. In detail we will be studying about the asexual reproduction and male reproductive system. Before going into the detail we should know what is reproduction. Reproduction is defined as the biological process of formation of new life forms from pre-existing similar forms. Now we all know that reproduction is a very important phenomenon for the continuity of the species. So it is the formation of new life from the pre-existing similar lives. It occurs by two methods as you can see here asexual and sexual. We will be directly going into the different points of asexual and sexual reproduction. As you can see here, the first says that it is involving a single organism. If it is involving a single organism, that means there is no production of gametes. That means male and female are not there. If male and female are not there, then there will be no fusion of gametes. If there is no fusion, there will be no meiosis and only mitosis. If it is mitosis, then the, all the new eye offsprings will be identical to the parent and if it, they are identical, there will be no genetic variation and this generally occurs by budding, fragmentation and sporulation. In contrast to asexual, now we see the sexual reproduction. It involves two organisms and hence male and female gametes are produced. If they are produced, then there will be fusion. If there is fusion, there will be meiotic division. Meiotic division will be there, so there will be some new characters and some mixed characters okay and then there will be more chance for the genetic variation it is very useful for the natural selection and in generally it occurs due to pollination in plants and by fertilization now we'll be seeing the methods in detail asexual reproduction first we'll see by gemule formation now, gemule is nothing but an internal bud in the sponges. And first of all, you should know that it is seen in unfavorable conditions. Jab suvidhaayi proper nahi hai, tab wo cell kya karta hai or organism kya karta hai, it goes into the gemule formation. That means they have a mass of these cells. These are called as archaeocytes or you can also tell them, uh, say as amoebocytes. So, these amoebocytes form a cluster and they secrete a thick resistance covering around themselves. And when the favorable conditions, yani ki temperature proper ho, water conditions proper ho, environment proper ho, tab ye yaha micro pile se ya opening se bahar nikalte hai as new individuals. Most commonly this is seen in spongilla. So you should remember that gemule formation occurs in unfavorable conditions. Next we see budding. You already know about this and it is very self-explanatory from this diagram. It is commonly seen in Hydra during the favorable conditions. Okay, as you can see there is a bud growing towards the base. These buds develop the mouth parts, tentacles etc. And slowly it detaches from the parent body and it becomes an independent organism. So this occurs in favorable conditions. Next we see regeneration. As the name suggests, regenerate. तो जो भी पार्ट बॉडी ने लूज कर दिया है तो उसको वो रीग्रो कर लेता है जैसे स्टारफिश है यू नो इट हैज गॉट आर्म्स सो इफ इट पार्ट इज लॉस्ट इट विल रीडेवलप सो दैट इज रीजेनरेशन ओके देन यू हैव फ्रेगमेंटेशन फ्रेगमेंटेशन एज द नेम सजेस्ट फ्रेगमेंट्स यदि बॉडी के टुकड़े हो जाते हैं तो वो टुकड़े नए पार्ट में डेवलप होते हैं अब ये प्लेनेरिया का एग्जाम्पल है प्लेनेरिया दोनों दिखाता है टुकड़े होते हैं यानी फ्रेगमेंट होते हैं और फ्रेगमेंट वापस रीजेनरेट हो जाते हैं इन टू दी कंप्लीट ऑर्गेनिज्म जो भी टुकड़ा टूट रहा है उसका मिसिंग पार्ट जो है वो यहाँ पे डेवलप हो जा रहा है ओके सो हेयर यू कैन सी इन फ्रेगमेंटेशन बोथ in planaria you can see regeneration as well as fragmentation okay so these were the four asexual methods which we studied we studied gemule formation we studied budding we studied regeneration and fragmentation now we go to the sexual reproduction in animals now the term first you should know what is amphimixis amphi means both mixing production of offsprings by the formation and fusion of gametes male and female now in the life there are two stages or two phases you can say the first phase is the juvenile phase juvenile phase yani birth ke baad ki jo phase hai jahan pe physical growth ho rahi hai 
फिजिकल ग्रोथ जहाँ हो रही है दैट इज जूवीनाइल फेज जैसे ही फिजिकल ग्रोथ कंप्लीट हो गई तो नेक्स्ट फेज आती है रिप्रोडक्टिव मेच्योरिटी फेज दिस इज आफ्टर द फिजिकल ग्रोथ इज ओवर एंड इट विल बी इन्वॉल्विंग दी ग्रोथ एंड मेच्योरिटी ऑफ द सेक्स ऑर्गन अब जब ग्रोथ एंड मेच्योरिटी ऑफ सेक्स ऑर्गन्स होंगी तो उसमें क्या क्या मिलेगा हमें उसमें सबसे पहले गैमीट्स बनेंगे सेक्स ऑर्गन्स मेच्योर हो गए तो मेल एंड फीमेल और जब वो बन गए हैं मेल और फीमेल गैमीट्स तो क्या होगा उनका फिर गैमीट्स का ट्रांसफर होगा ओके गैमीट्स ट्रांसफर होंगे उसके बाद ट्रांसफर होने के बाद दे विल बी फ्यूजन ऑफ दी गैमीट्स उसको हम कहते हैं फर्टिलाइजेशन जैसे ही फर्टिलाइजेशन हो गया तो उसके बाद के प्रोसेस स्टार्ट हो जाएंगे जैसे कि फ्यूजन होने के बाद जाइगोट बनता है जाइगोट में फिर उसके बाद डिविजन होने लगते हैं और फिर वो एम्ब्रियो बनता है उसके बाद देर विल बी देगनेंसी पीरियड विच इज जेस्टेशन एंड फाइनली देर विल बी दर्थ विच इज कॉल्ड एज पार्चुरेशन सो दीज आर दी phases in the reproductive maturity phase okay so these are the two stages now next we'll be seeing the main first part of the human reproduction male reproductive system in your text there is a diagram which shows the male reproductive system and you are supposed to label the diagram now first of all you should know that may it is this part for studies have been divided into three part the first part will be studying in detail about the testes and then all the different types of ducts which you can see here you can see the seminal vesicle uh, sorry this is the vas deferens duct and then there is the ejaculatory duct then there is the urethra so first we will be studying about the testes secondly we will study about the different types of ducts and thirdly we will be studying about the glands here you can see one seminal vesicle here you can see the prostate gland and then you can see the bulbo urethral gland here also so in three parts we are going to study the male reproductive system now as you can see here there is a pair of testes okay here you can see it is down outside the body into the scrotum as you can see it is an oval structure about 4 to 5 cm in length it is there in 2 to 3 cm in thickness and also in width and also about 3 cm in thickness now in detail we are going to study about these testes if we cut it in section if we cut it longitudinally and if we cut it transversely here it is the ls of testis which is longitudinal section and here the ts of testis which is the transverse section now here you see how the testis has been studied now it has got a covering outermost covering is tunica vaginal vaginalis above this also there is a small, uh, incomplete covering which is called as vasculosa after that there is vaginalis and then there is tunica albuginea the most important covering now this tunica albuginea which you can see here in the white portion it divides this complete testis into two 100 or 300 lobules which you can see here in black it is dividing it into 200 300 lobules and these lobules have got inside them each lobule 2 to 3 seminiferous tubules tubuli seminifera likha hai but that means seminiferous tubules okay so here you see same structure this seminiferous tubule in sorry in uh, transfer section you see this is the tunica albuginea which you were see, seeing here this tunica albuginea and then you have these seminiferous tubules these rounded structures as you can see here in the seminiferous tubules they are having an outermost lining of germinal epithelial these are the cells which give rise to our sperms how with the various process which will be studying in detail later that there are different stages of spermatogenesis there is this primary spermatocyte then there is the secondary spermatocyte then there are these spermatozoa and then there is the sperms so this is how there are the various stages of uh, development of sperms and in the center you can see here the various sperms in between the sperms you can see these purple colored cells they are the supporting cells or the sertoli cells which help in the nourishment of the sperms and in between these seminiferous bundles you can see certain other cells which are called as the interstitial cells or another name also you should know cells of leydig this is very important from mcq point of view these cells of leydig secrete the male hormone androgen or it is also called as testosterone okay so you are clear from this the various coverings 
tunica vasculosa, vaginalis, albuginia, and then you have the seminiferous tubules. These are the seminiferous tubules which are having the cuboidal germinal epithelium. They have Sertoli cells, they have interstitial cells. Okay. Now, after the first part A, we go to the next part which are the accessory ducts. Now, the ducts, as you can see, these are the, this is the same diagram showing the seminiferous tubules at the posterior end they form a network and this network is called as rete testis okay this network of capillary uh, tubules they are called as rete testis now these rete testis join together form 15 to 20 vasa efferentia efferent ductules you can see here yeah? they form vasa efferentia now they carry the sperms from the testis up to the epididymis now, this epididymis is divided into three parts. It is a long coil tube. First part is called as the head of the epididymis and then it is called as the body of the epididymis and the third part is called as the tail of the epididymis. These are the three parts which are there. Okay, head, body and tail. Now, in your text, there is also the name given as head is called as caput. Cap se yaad rakhye, caput epididymis. Beach ka part jo body hai, usko corpus epididymis bolte hain. Aur tail ka jo part hai, usko hum coda epididymis bolte hain. Tail yaane hi coda bolte hain. So, three parts are done. Now, this epididymis carries the sperms to the next tube which is called as the vas deferens. After the vas deferens, it enters into the body as you can see here this is the vas deferens it, it is entering it these are the ureters it coils around the ureter and it opens into the ejaculatory duct and then the urethra so next ducts are the ejaculatory ducts and the urethra okay but before going joining the ejaculatory duct it is also joined by the different glands as i told you there is the seminal vesicle there is the prostate gland there is the bulbourethral glands so the next part which we are going to study after these ducts is glands now as you can see this is the vast difference coiling it has which has been coiled and then it has entered the uh, ejaculatory duct it is before entering the ejaculatory duct it is joined by this seminal vesicle this is a vesicle as you can see this is the shape and it contains seminal fluid it is very important it secretes an alkaline seminal fluid which is containing fructose fibrinogen and prostaglandins now itni cheeze hain to sab inka zaruri role hoga to fructose jo hai wo energy provide karta hai for the movement of the sperms you know the sperm is very motile it has to move along path up to the oviduct of the female so the fructose gives the energy for the movement then the fibrinogen this protein is there which coagulates the semen yani semen ko thoda coagulate karta hai bolus jaisa banata hai aur usko propulsion yani movement vagina mein fast move kare wo female ke iske liye usko coagulation ka roop deta hai uske baad third jo hai prostaglandins they also help in the faster movement of the sperm towards the egg in the female body to ye teeno mila ke cheeze fibrinogen fructose and prostaglandins kya banata hai about 60 percent of the semen it is formed of seminal vesicle just remember this okay very important from the mcq point of view now as you can see jaise seminal vesicle se niche ja raha hai to dusra gland yahan aapko dikh raha hai prostate gland urinary bladder ke niche hota hai this is the prostate gland this prostate gland as you can see here below the bladder it has been seen here it secretes the prostatic fluids now this fluid constitutes about 30 percent of the total semen and this is milky white and slightly acidic because it contains acid phosphatase this acid phosphatase neutralizes the acidic environment of the female part vagina so this protects the sperm this acid phosphatase jo hai, it protects the sperm from the acidic environment of the vagina so this is the prostate gland okay as you can see here next you can see is the small p-shaped sized gland which is the cowper's gland this cowper's gland is also called as bulbourethral gland here is the cowper's gland you as you can see they are the P-shaped gland, they are the Cowper's gland or bulbourethral glands. Now, these glands also secrete a lubricant which is helpful during the process of copulation. 
okay and it is a paired gland on either side of the urethra jo ejaculatory duct hai ye opening hai this will further move down and it will form the urethra <coughs> so these were the three glands which we studied seminal vesicle then it was the prostate gland and it was the cowper's gland now in teenon ke secretions milke kya banayenge semen okay very important from the mcq point of view what is semen semen is a viscous alkaline milky fluid alkaline hai yani ph 7 se zyada hai 7.2 to 7.7 ph rahega aur कम अमाउंट जैसे ढाई एम से लेके करीब चार एम तक का सीमेंट जो होगा उसमें कितने स्पर्म्स होंगे 400 मिलियन स्पर्म्स इमेजिन आउट ऑफ दिस ओनली वन स्पर्म जो है दैट इज गोइंग टू फर्टिलाइज द एग ओके देन व्हाट यू हैव इट्स सिक्रीशन व्हिच इज देयर फॉर द शॉर्ट नोट व्हिच इज आस्ड मोस्टली दैट वॉट डज इट कंटेन इट कंटेन्स the secretions of the epididymis epididymis kya karta hai kuch nahi par sperms leke aata hai and the accessory glands seminal vesicle ka seminal fluid prostate gland ka prostatic fluid and then the lubricating fluid of the cowper's gland so it helps these glands help for nourishing the sperms fructose padha tha humne neutralizing acidity acid phosphatase padha tha prostaglandins padha tha for the active movement of the sperms to zyada marks ke liye aata hai to aap inki detail likhiye ki nourishing ke liye kaun hai acidity neutralize karne ke liye kya zarurat hai aur activation ke liye kya secretions hai so this is a very important part for the short note one mark two mark ke liye ye pucha ja sakta hai नेक्स्ट पार्ट वी कम टू दी एक्सटर्नल जेनाइटेलिया दिस एक्सटर्नल जेनाइटेलिया में जो फर्स्ट पार्ट है वो है पेनिस एज यू कैन सी हियर द पेनिस इज द मेल पॉपुलेटरी ऑर्गन व्हिच इज सिलेंड्रिकल एंड इट हैज गॉट थ्री बंडल्स ऑफ इरेक्टाइल टिश्यू एंड नाउ यू कैन सी इन दिस डायग्राम वेरी क्लियरली देयर इज इन द सेंटर देयर इज द कॉर्पस स्पोंजियोसम हियर एंड देन यू हैव द पेयर्ड कॉर्पोरा कैवर्नोसा ओके मीडियम अंदर सेंट्रल साइड में जो है वो कॉर्पस स्पॉन्जियोसम है साइड्स में जो है वो कॉर्पोरा कैवर्नोसा है ऊपर का जो पोर्शन है उसको हम ग्लैंड पेनिस बोलते हैं जो सोलन टिप होती है पेनिस की एंड इट इज आल्सो कवर्ड बाय अ फोल्ड ऑफ स्किन लूज फोल्ड ऑफ स्किन व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज प्रेप्यूज और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज फोर स्किन यू शुड नो दीज नेम्स दीज मसल बंडल स्पॉन्जियोसम कैवर्नोसा ग्लैंड पेनिस एंड प्रेप्यूज ओके नाउ as you can see here this penis and in the lower side there is the scrotum the second part which we have to study is the scrotum it is a loose pouch lying behind the penis it is lying behind the penis and it is divided into right and left by a septum muscles hoti hain dot dotus muscles dartus muscles usse ye right aur left mein separate kiya hua hota hai ya डिवाइड uh, किया होता है और इस पेनिस में बहुत सारे मसल्स होते हैं जो आपके टेक्स्ट में है वो एक लिखा है डार्टोस मसल और एक लिखा है क्रिमेस्टिक मसल्स जस्ट रिमेंबर क्रिमेस्टर एंड सॉरी क्रिमेस्टर एंड डार्टोस मसल्स आर देयर व्हिच हेल्प द टेस्टिस टू मूव अवे और क्लोज फ्रॉम द बॉडी एंड ऑल्सो एज यू कैन सी दीज टेस्टिस आर हैंगिंग बाय द स्पर्मेटिक कॉर्ड inside the scrotum okay and if by chance these testes fail to descend down outside the body in the uh, outside the abdominal cavity that feature is called as sorry that feature is called as crypto orchidism okay it is called as crypto orchidism this term you should remember what it is called as okay so and why is it down descended down inside the body because here the temperature is lower it is normal then it is lower about 2 to 3 degree centigrade and that is very essential for spermatogenesis so this is the question which is asked in your um, exams that why they are present outside the body in the outside the abdominal cavity because we have to maintain a lower temperature which is helpful for spermatogenesis okay so this is all we have studied about in detail in the about male reproductive system go slide by slide prepare notes take screenshots and this much will be enough for your exams 
okay in the next session we'll be studying about the female reproductive system in detail thank you and have a good day